You know, <laughs> when I posted that video last week of the disassembly reassembly process of the Winchester Moroku 1886, I left out a really key step that would have saved me a lot of time. And of course, I'm talking about George here and welcome to Tales from Target Suite where I'll share my perspective on perspective <laughs> where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting and we'll spend some time at the range and every now and then we'll reconvene out in my shop back in Houston or here at the farm uh, where I'll build some fun projects and we'll share an adventure or two that'll make even a grown man smile and of course I am talking about lubrication you see the week before I filmed that video I had a bunch of guys here from church at the farm and we put probably 150 rounds through this thing and towards the end of the day it began to protest a little bit because some of those high friction well, points they needed some lubrication and so we're gonna disassemble the rifle again today we'll do it in light speed and um, then we'll talk about lubrication for the Winchester 1886 so stay tuned Okay, let's talk um, lubrication philosophy for just a second. Don't bail out on me because this is important. Two of my favorite YouTube guys, one is Hickok45, the other is Gunblue490. Two guys that are very mature. One of them I think is actually older than I am. And they have diametrically opposed views on lubrication. Hickok45 slathers his guns in ballastol and Gunblue 490 uses a judicious application of just mineral oil. Nothing fancy, right? Nothing fancy for either guy. And both men have a decades-long successful, I'll call it career, of gun management. And so, and so you, can have, you can have really diverse opinions about, about uh, gun lubrication, but the bottom line is if you just keep the little slick stuff between the hard points that want to wear, you're going to do 99%, those are my imaginary numbers, um, of all the lubrication that you really need to do. The only danger you have is if you are in one of those extreme environments where it's incredibly dusty, then if you use too much lubrication, you're going to create a mess because all that dust is going to get in there and it's going to stick where you don't want it. But the vast majority of us don't live in an environment like that and we clean our guns fa uh, fairly frequently. So the bottom line is we just need to do some lubrication every now and then. And for me, I'm using Wilson Combat products, the Ultima Lube 2 Grease and the Ultima Lube 2, that's hard to say, uh, Universal, which is an oil. And I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not sponsored by anybody. And I don't even have any affiliate links. And so I've got nothing in the tank with Wilson Combat. I just like the way these seem to work. So a lot of people will say grease. No, no, not grease anywhere. But I think there are places in the, in the Winchester 1886 and also the other uh, genre, the 1892, 94, and 71, where you have some really high pressure contact points inside that rifle and grease, I believe, is a good choice. I'm not saying it's the only choice, I'm just saying it's a good choice. And the grease from Wilson Combat is very temp temperature insensitive. In other words, it stays semi-liquid or even liquid, I call it a liquid, um, out of the freezer. But now where would I, let's start with the grease. Where would I grease the Winchester 1886? Okay, the first place that I would consider grease would be between the carrier link and the carrier because the boss on the carrier link is very small as it rides in that slot and so that creates a very high stress, high pressure uh, area when the carrier link slides in that groove. Now one thing I would say is don't put, it, put any more lubrication than you need to. Uh, it just makes a mess that you have to clean up later. My, me personally, I kind of find a balance between Hickok 45's slathering of ballastol and Gunblue 490 and his application of mineral oil. 
um, but I think I'm even a little bit more conservative on the amounts than GunBlue 490. And so the way that I apply my lubrications is with a cotton swab. And I'll just take the lubrication, I'll put a little bit on the end of a cotton swab, and then make sure it gets really worked in there. And then I'll take those points that need the lubrication, and I just do a really quick, just like that. Same thing on the same thing on the on the carrier, just a little bit. And another place that needs needs uh, grease is the finger lever. And the slot where the pin goes through the finger lever is a very uh, is going to be a high pressure point. And so I'll lubricate the slot as well as the pin. I'll also use grease on the breech bolt on the rails for the breech bolt. I'm using the same Q-tip for all of these places. And also, these, these uh, friction points right here, this is where the, the uh, locking lugs rub really hard right in there, so I think that's a grease point. And also, this surface here that drags across the top of the hammer. And then I would also grease, I would also grease the friction points on the locking lugs. Probably the most important one is this area right here that actually cams the breech bolt closed. And then of course we're going to put a little grease in the track for the breech bolt rails. Okay, that's enough for the grease. Now let's put on a little uh, a little oil on some of the rotating points. Now these uh, places like the hammer screw I mean, they only need to be lubricated once in a blue moon because you're just not going to lose the lubrication out of there. And so I'll lubricate the, uh, the hole in the hammer and also the hammer screw itself. And then I would oil also the finger lever where the pin goes through the finger lever and that same pin where it goes through the breech bolt. So I think that's um, most of the places that I would lubricate. I might have missed something, you know, having to think on your feet and do a video, you're going to miss something. But if you think I've missed some spots that needed some lubrication, let me know and let me know whether you think it's a grease spot or an oil spot. And so, uh, you know what, I'm going to throw this thing get back together. Half of you are going to bail on me now, but you know, we may do something special at the end. I'm not sure what it'll be, but um, you know what, just in case you're thinking about it, be sure and subscribe. And then if you click on that little bell, YouTube says you might get notified every time I upload a new video, which happens usually on Tuesday. So uh, let's get this thing back together and see if it sounds like it's been lubricated. Well, I gotta tell you, that is so much better with a little bit of grease. And, I, and, and the thing that I noticed the most and this is the first time that I've actually put grease between on the link between the on the uh, surface between the carrier link and the carrier is that now my carrier pops up without that extra you know used to I had to really do this to get the carrier to come up but now the carrier just comes up so easy and so I'm I'm convinced that now a little bit of oil would have helped as well but I've actually oiled that before and what I want to see now is, does the grease stick around in that joint between the carrier link and the carrier longer than oil? But uh, in any case, there you have it. That's my, uh, my take on lubricating an 1886 Roku version. And um, I think now I need to find something to shoot. You know, rather than go to the range, I thought, let's go down to the pond because 
I've got my, my new uh, GoPro Hero 8. And, <laughs> and I've got that slow motion that we can use. So let's, um, let's get set up and let me show you what we're gonna do. Uh, I think you're gonna like it. Okay, what better way do we have to, uh, to end the day than we can revisit some old friends and, uh, and shoot a pumpkin? with the uh, well-lubricated 1886. And so let's get down to business, but let me show you what we're gonna use here. Oh yes, it's the Vitamax. Look at that. This will be the swan song for our Vitamax. So let's get started and, um, and let's see what this GoPro Hero 8 can do with slow motion. Okay, here we are. Let me get that GoPro starting. Okay, here we go. Leaper Revolution. Let's see if we can do this in one take. I love it. I'll see you in the next video.